Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining our special live stream today. And it is all about the power inside your diagnostic platform. We're talking about the spring software release that has actually already started trickling out to some of you. Those of you who are on software subscription can get it about a week early. We started out on Monday and uh, at the time of this filming anyways. And this is going to be for the North America software release because we do have multiple releases across the globe and of course different cars in different areas so this applies to north america of course so let's talk about it so coverage just keeps growing every six months you get a massive software update and this one is just as massive if not even more massive than our last few that we've updated and if we talk about two years worth of growth and different markets of vehicles that we cover. We can see here North America, 13% increase in system coverage, 12% increase in PIDs, 12% increase in scripted and functional tests. So that's a great increase. I'll look at European, 17, 29, and 22. And then Asian, 29% additional functional tests over the last two years. It's been a real big push there and European as well, as we can see. So that's for the vehicle communication stuff. That's the scanner side of it. We also have, of course, the guided component test side of things as well. So uh, this as a this particular update, this uh, 24.2, the spring update, is a massive new update. And if we look at the uh, last two years of system growth, uh, we don't even have engine on here because it's 375,000 engine system tests. So that's crank sensors, cam sensors, oxygen sensors, all the engine related sensors and tests were added in the last two years. And then we can see transmission, body electrical, all the way down to even like electronic transfer case, HV electronics, hybrid electronics. So that's really started in the last year or so, this high, high voltage and hybrids for the EV vehicles and the hybrid vehicles are in there. So you can see tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of new tests added just in the last two years. And that, of course, covers multi multiple model years, multiple engines and multiple other systems. Uh, let's talk about SureTrack, another one of our exclusive things. So this is based on real world information and, and the majority of our tools, as long as you're on current software and as long as you're hooked up to Wi-Fi, have access to this SureTrack information. So it's over 40 million real fix tips based on data from over 2.75 billion shop repair events. That is a lot of data, a lot of real world information. What actually fixed this vehicle when it was there? There's a commonly replaced parts graph that shows by code based on mileage. Professional technicians also author SureTrack real fixes and fixed it information. There are community fixes from SureTrack community members that are accessible as well. You can also ask and answer your own questions if you wish to do that. And as I said, that adds real world experience to that OEM level data that we have and helps to diagnose and fix problems faster and correctly the first time, which is always a good thing. Another one of our exclusive uh items that come in the software is fast track intelligent diagnostics. And this time around, we have made a very good change. I think we've been asking for this for quite some time, PID flags on non-engine systems. So if I have a code in a body control module, in a transmission control module, and in this example, this is in a battery control module on a Prius. So in here, we actually have the, the PID flag data on the battery voltage. So we can see if it was a battery voltage code or something like that, we can look and monitor and see what's out of spec just at a glance. So this is a, a continuing ongoing project. And, and like I said, we just started this time and uh, with this update. And then as we go down the road, of course, we'll be adding more and more and more as time goes on. Also in the last, this update and the last update, we started adding pictures to some of these uh sure track community posts so some of these posts have been making their way into fast track intelligent diagnostics and they also have pictures attached to them i'm going to show you one example in a little while when we go live on the tool but here's an example here and this is our uh you know basically complaint cause correction it's on a 2017 audi and what happens is a p2681 engine coolant bypass valve control circuit open and when the dtc is set in the vehicle is a probability it's caused by coolant ingress and then a water pump connector from a leaking engine water pump. And we can see what that looks like right there. So that's very simple. Remove the intake pipe, look under the intake manifold, there'd be a black five pin connector attached to the bottom side of the water pump. Remove the connector and look, does it have coolant or not? If it does have coolant or it does have corrosion, then that's most likely the cause of your problem. It might not be the entirety of your problem, but that's a good place to start. 
And then uh, if it is corroded from coolant migration, it's recommended by technicians to replace the vehicle's water pump, engine coolant, thermostat housing, and the corroded water pump connector and wiring harness to prevent this from happening again. So that is a great tip. And if you don't normally work on those types of vehicles and you came across that tip for this code, well, that's a huge time saver right there, right? Here's another on a 2011 Tahoe PL641. Intermittent no start as well, hard start and lack of power. Uh, so the 641 is a sensor reference voltage A circuit open. And experience a variety of different systems as it said. Uh, vehicle already had the engine oil pressure sensor and engine control module replaced in a previous repair. So that sounds like they didn't quite get to the, the root of the problem. Uh, inspected the circuits, found out that there's a uh, wires underneath the vehicles, discovered there was a break in several wires, which caused the code. So that's over here. We can see the several wires break underneath the uh, vehicle right there. And that's, that's easily to visual check, right? All right, so let's talk about scan tool side first. And then we got a boatload of stuff for guided component tests, as I said, but let's we got quite a bit in the um, guided comp on component test and the scan side. So this is first the scan side. 2023 model year updates. So we started with model year updates back in the fall in 23. We started with maybe half a little more of the manufacturers. And now with these 15 additional manufacturers, all the vehicles that are covered in the tool that have a 2023 model have their full coverage that they would normally have. Codes, data, functional tests, special functions. All that good stuff is in there uh, for these 15 different manufacturers here. And then since we're in 2024, what we've been doing for the past, oh, three, four years now at least, is uh, current model year code scan and clear. At a minimum, you can scan and clear codes on any 2024 model that we cover. So things like dealerships, right? You could have a brand new, you could have a, a 2024 traded in, right? Could be. Plus some dealerships use our tools over the factory tool because it's faster and easier to use. So you can at least scan those vehicles. And if you need to go any further, then of course you could break out the dealership uh, tool. Body shops, of course, you could get a vehicle in with five miles in a body shop. Last company, same, same, uh, same deal. Rental car places, you know, rental cars, they usually turn them over at 30,000 miles or less. Uh, rental car sublet or body shop sublet. So if you do any of that work, um, rental car and body shop sublet, then hey, great, um, great use of that for you. All right, 2023 added model coverage. So these are models that were not previously covered in the tool. Some of them are brand new, just came out in 2023. Others have been around for maybe a, uh, you know six months to a year. But things like the Dodge Hornet, the new uh, small engine car with also a hybrid option, Cadillac Lyric, which is an electric vehicle, Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon, they're small pickups, Kia EV6, which is their uh, electric um, SUV, and then the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV2, so that's a plug-in hybrid vehicle. So that is all covered. Let's go through the different brands. So first off, Chevy. So 2024 code scan and clear, as we said. Also the new Colorado model coverage. 22 newer Silverado, 10 added systems, including some systems for ADOF. 22 and 23 engine freeze frame list updates, so enhanced freeze frame on those. 2020 and, uh, to 22 Corvette transmission special functions. 07 to 14 Silverado power takeoff modules. So this brings me back to what we hear sometimes is, oh, well, I don't work on brand new cars, so I don't need the update. And, you know, even with brand new cars, you're still going to have that information. But look, we go all the way back to 07. 07, right? That's what, 17 years. 17 years back. Up to 14 Silverado, which is still a 10 years back. Uh, so adding information for that power takeoff model, right? This one's really, really great, I think. Really exciting. So Ford, right? 2023 model year update, 2024 code scan and clear. Uh, 9 to 14 F-150 transmission special functions, 9 to 14 F-350 body control module battery monitoring system reset. So that is in the body control module. It will, if it notices the battery dips below a certain level, it'll turn off modules and you have to wait five, six hours for them to reboot or re-come back on once the battery voltage goes up. So in order to not have to wait for that for diagnostic purposes or what have you, you can actually go in and reset it and then it turns them back on. This one highlighted here. This one, I think, is one of the most exciting and one of the most requested functions on our tools. And uh, now we have it for a large swath of F-Series. So we, we started with the newer ones. 
added a few here and there, but now there's a massive date range from 09 to 14. And then of course we already had 14 and newer as well. And then 2011 and newer all F series programmable module installation. So this is necessary to complete the job on a lot of tasks now on Fords. And of course, if you watched my OEM Ford training that I did a few weeks ago, uh, number one seller in North America is the Ford F-150. So that is a very common vehicle, very common to have those repairs done. And now we have that capability. You don't have to bring it back to the dealer for that. We'll be talk more in detail in a second on that. Uh, 2021 and newer E-Series transmission special functions and 14 to 20 Transit. That's the uh, high top van. Uh, the dosage module. So that's for the diesel filter. Uh, codes, data, actuator tests, and resets for that. So we can do some good work on that 10, year, 10 years back. So speaking of PMI, this is a really good example of why I might need that. So a tail light. This is on tail light and on like a 15 F-150. And uh, if you see, that's got that funny looking little logo right there. And it's kind of hard to see, but that is the side radar. That is the blind spot radar is actually built in kind of behind the taillight assembly in this area here. So if this taillight gets damaged, smashed, you know, rock hits it or whatever, even in a collision, uh, I will need to replace that. And I may also need to replace the radar. If I do need to replace the radar, in order to finish the job, to install the reverses, the, uh, reverse the removal procedure, and then using a diagnostic scan tool, complete the PMI process for the left side or the right side, and that's for this uh, side object detection radar, uh, right side and left side, following the on-screen instructions. So now that is a capability, a factory capability that we now have in the scan tool. Also another good example, a steering rack. This is a fairly common repair on these, and you would have to do a PMI on that as well. So using vehicle as built data or module configuration information retrieved earlier in this procedure. So that's what the PMI does. PMI, basically what you're going to do is you're going to leave the old module in the vehicle before you replace it. It's going to extract the information it needs, and it's going to save it to the scan tool. Then you do your repair, put the new module in, hook the scan tool back up. The scan tool can then take that data that it had, that it grabbed off the old module, and puts it into a new module, therefore allowing it to configure itself, and you don't have to then worry about bringing it to the dealer or any of that. So I think that's a wonderful addition. And like I said, it's been asked for for a very long time. So it's very excited that it's in there for this many model years. Moving on to Hyundai, 2024 code scan and clear, uh, 2018 and newer Santa Fe analog brake control module brake pad change mode. So that's a common request for that as well. And then if we see down here, we can't really list them out because there's so many of them. It wouldn't want, it would take a long time to cover them on a slide, but various freeze frame data, special functions, uh, instrument cluster module variant coding, engine, electronic power steering and front view camera special functions, a very long list of special functions added to these systems. So there's a whole uh, uh, bucket of new information that we were able to gather, and now we have that available in the tool. Same thing with Kia. Since Hyundai and Kia are very closely related, uh, they're gonna have an awful lot of that information carry over as well. So engine front view camera, instrument cluster, electronic power steering, et cetera. Also note the 2023 new EV6 model coverage as well. Mitsubishi, the new 2023 Outlander coverage. Nissan, uh, 2024 code scan and clear. 2011 and newer leaf heating, ventilation, and intelligent power distribution actuator tests. 2017 and newer Rogue, intelligent cruise control functional tests. And for Toyota, 2017 and newer Camry occupant classification system calibration. So that's the passenger seat where the seat belt will ding if it notices somebody's in there and the seat belt is not attached. Uh, Land Rover, code scan and clear on 2024s. This one's uh, pretty interesting down here though. Chassis control module, special functions. So 13 to 16 Range Rover, 14 to 16 Range Rover Sport. That is for the air suspension. So a lot of new air suspension tests and functions available in there for that chassis control module. So that's a, that's a big ad right there. Uh, okay, moving on. So that's the uh, highlights. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into some of these. So that's the highlights so far. And of course, way more than we can talk about in the 30 to 40 minutes I have here. Uh, moving on to another function that's been turned on in the tools, so to speak. This function has been available for a while in the majority of our tools, recent tools. And that is CanFD. So CanFD has been making the rounds, the buzz uh, the last year or two because some other companies 
have been selling this can FD adapter that they need to be able to communicate with these vehicles. And that's fine. Um, cause we have an adapter available too, for one of our tools, but, um, it wasn't really necessary in North America up until now, cause we didn't have coverage for that. Um, and, uh, so 2021 and newer Jeep Grand Cherokee, 2022 and newer Jeep Grand uh, Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, the parking aid module and analog brakes are can FD. So we'll have communication with that. And then 2022 and newer Cadillac Escalade chassis control module is available uh, for that. So those are the three modules that you would need it on at this time for North American vehicles. And if you have anything newer than a first generation Solus Edge, the first year or so of the Solus Edge had a different board, um, you don't need anything because it's already built into the chipset on the board and it'll just get turned on with the software update and you'll be able to communicate with them no adapter needed. If you do need the adapter, you'll see it's right here. It looks just like the Ethernet adapter, except it's gray. It's the only difference. And how do I know if I have a first generation Solus Edge? Really, the easiest way to know is if I try to hook to one of these things and it tells me I need the cable, you need the cable. If you have anything other than a Solus Edge, you won't need the cable because uh, anything that is currently updatable uh, would be newer than the first gen or the first generation Solus Edge and newer. So uh, that, those are all the current available updates. So it wouldn't apply to a Solus Ultra, for example, Modus Ultra, those can't be updated anymore. Uh, it would only apply to this first generation Solus Edge. Anything newer, like I said, doesn't need an adapter at all. It would just get you right in. You don't even, can't even tell, don't even know. Uh, and for those of you who are wondering, CAN-FD stands for Controller Area Network Flexible Data Rate. So CAN-FD is, is just a faster CAN bus on the vehicle, right? So structurally identical to traditional CAN, we often see CAN bus modules and CAN FD modules on the same vehicle, um, but it just is able to carry more data and faster. So it's anywhere from three to eight times faster than a traditional CAN that we're used to. So that is a wonderful improvement that we're able to get into those vehicles and those modules. All right, let's move on to guided component tests. So like I said, a massive guided component test update this time. So what is guided component test and how does it help? So this is available on the tools that are listed on the screen, right? So Vantage, Modus, Triton, uh, Varus, and Zeus tools. And what it does is it gives us operation, location, connector views, tech notes, and between one and six testing methods for a component, which helps us avoid unnecessary parts replacement, which in turn helps prevent comebacks because who likes comebacks, right? Testing the part is a good way to reduce comebacks. But what's worse than a comeback? It's a never comeback. Because that means the customer went to your shop. Maybe it didn't get fixed, but they went down the street to get it fixed. And you might, nev might never know because they never came back. And in that case, you may end up losing a customer, which is our third bullet point here, prevents loss of a customer. Other side of that coin, though, maybe you are the shop that gets it right the first time and diagnoses it properly and all that and tests the things. So that can help attract new customers. And overall... All of these things can help improve shop, shop's profitability. And it doesn't matter where you work in the shop, whether you're the secretary, a lube tech, service writer, whoever, having working in a profitable shop is a lot more, a lot better than working in a non-profitable shop, right? So everybody, you know, can can equally uh, get some get some more of that money. Uh, so got a component test. Tell us how to look it up, where to hook it up, and what it should look like all on the same screen. And it allows us to have that all on the same screen. So I don't have to look elsewhere to try and find it. So some of the additions here, as you can see on Chevrolet alone, this is a fill goes off the side of the slide, right? This goes all the way over here. And you'll see uh, quite a few times is the brake pedal position switch, brake, brake light switch, brake pedal position switch, neutral switch, uh, torque converter clutch on that one, but a lot of brake pedal position switches. So on a Chevy GM product in general, they don't have a brake light switch per se on most of them. newer ones. Uh, have a brake pedal position switch. So it's more of a sensor that tells the computer where it is in space. Now, when I need to diagnose it, I can do that now with this. And then to repair it, to finish the repair, did you know that you also need to reset that switch, relearn that switch in two different modules? It needs to go in the engine control module and in the body control module separately. So there actually is a way to know where to go and see that on the tool. And we'll actually... Uh, mentioned that in a little bit too on the uh, service resets and relearns. I've talked about it before uh, on that particular brake position, brake pedal position switch. 
here's just an example of what it would look like, right? So uh, I was I was uh, doing this uh, class for all our regional managers uh, a couple weeks ago, and one of them remarked, "Well, you, see, you know, brake light switch used to be simple. It used to be two wires. You know, it's just been an on off switch. Now we got six different wires going into this, and it's it's low reference and sensor signals and voltages and stuff going in there. So it's it's all sorts of different." Uh, signals. But that down here is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, brake pedal position sensor calibration is performed after the brake pe pedal position sensor, body control module, or engine control module are serviced. Brake pedal position sensor signal and BCM data display should be less than a tenth of a volt. If not, perform the calibration procedure. And that is done with the scan tool. Main purpose of the calibration is to set the home value of the brake pedal position sensor at rest with the foot off the brake pedal. And then you would do that both in the body control module and the engine. All right, let's talk Ford was a big update on vehicle communication stuff. It's also a pretty big update on the guided component test. So uh, 8 to 10 F-Series Super Duty 6.4 liter engine EGT sensors. So that's pretty big for diesel. Uh, 2020 EcoSport Edge F-Series Super Duty 7.3. That's the gas engine on there. Uh, 6.2 and 6.7 on the F-Series Super Duties. Also the 6R100 and 6R140 transmission information, 2020 and newer. Uh, F-Series Super Duty ABS system down here, uh, F-150 3.5 liter engine with location images that we started to do. Also with the uh, 2021 Bronco 2.3 and 2.7 liter with location images as well. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, Acura and Honda, a lot of body electrical systems uh, for the MDX, RDX, RLX, and charging system as well. Uh, same thing with the Cord Civic, CRV, Odyssey, body electrical uh, transfer case. Uh, charging system as well and starting system as well in there so that's good for honda and acura nissan body electrical hybrid electronics on the rogue uh abs system on all of these models and then the nv which is the other high top uh van that they that, that nissan sells abs system in there subaru big update there on body electrical charging system hybrid electronics on the cross track hybrid uh, let's see, engine on the WRX, BRZ, Ascent, etc. 2020 to 22, hybrid transmissions, and then uh, Outback ABS systems as well, or Ascent Forcer and present Outback ABS system configurations as well. And then here's just an example on the 21 Crosstrek hybrid, the amount of high voltage and hybrid tests that are now available within the tool. So that's, you know, things like the motor generator, uh, hybrid battery cell voltage sensor, battery temperature sensor, battery control module itself. Uh, so all this information is now available at your fingertips for and and other hybrid vehicles as well. Uh, but this is uh, one of the latest additions. All right. And then as far as European, we got BMW and Mercedes Benz. We can see a lot of engine and transmission on these uh, various models here. I'm not going to read through all of them. Like 740s, uh, 2019, 2018, we go back to 2013 on the uh, two, uh, 254 Matics, uh, F560, the four liter engine as and don't forget to get the most from your tool, the school in the tool. There is built-in training classes inside guided component tests. Before you even ID a vehicle, there's a training and classes tab, uh, or just classes now, I guess, available in there. If you go into the how-to section, there's over 65 categories of class, anywhere from 10-minute electronics classes to 20-minute CAN bus class. And it's all readily available, like I said, for free in that tool already. You don't even have to hook up to a vehicle. You can just do it on a lunch break or whatever, you can go in and learn. All right, new and enhanced actual features to the tool, you know, user abilities, uh, user interface changes and so, such. Uh, so this one, my buddy Keith, who also does training, he calls this the bifocal button. So it can go from a normal font to a larger font. So you can see it's, it's a little bit bigger, not a lot bigger, but it's big enough where some of those that maybe might be a little hard of seeing uh, might make it a little easier to see them. So switch between the normal font and the large font. This one's been requested. Um, and there will be other changes coming on the scope. I see I see there's some comments up there on YouTube I'll get to in a little bit. But uh, this is a, a scope change across the board. So there is a reset all settings or reset function, depending on what menu you're in. So what happens with our scope is whenever you leave the scope and go back in, it's set up the exact same way it was when you left, which is normally a pretty good thing. But sometimes some of some users have said that, hey, you know, I go in there and I'm changing some of the settings and then I can't figure out how to get back to where I was or back to default or what have you. 
So now there's a simple button that just goes to reset all settings, resets it back to factory, and then you can just go take off from there. So, uh, you know, sometimes the settings get out of whack. Uh, that can be done. So this is on a Triton. And then on a Zeus or a Veris, it's going to look like this. It's just a uh, button there that says reset all functions before you get into the scope and just hit OK. Does not affect your presets, by the way, on the Zeus and the uh, all right, and then this is a this is another biggie right here as well because we had some issues well, maybe a year ago when one of the major internet service providers pushed an automatic update to a bunch of routers and they upgraded the security to WPA3, and we didn't have the drivers for that in place at the time because of course they didn't tell us they were going to do that. Uh, so now all of our tools, uh, all of our current and newer tools, uh, will get the access to that WPA3. Uh, security. So that's just a higher security level on the Wi-Fi that got changed. All right. And then uh, here's another change. Don't know how many people this will apply to, but it is good for those of you in body shops that are using one of our Windows-based tools, like a Veris or a Zeus. If you're in a body shop and you have access to Sun Collision Data, you can now link to the Sun Collision Data site, just like you could ShopD Pro or ProDemand. So you just simply go down to the menu and you switch it over to Sun Collision Data log in that way, and then it'll work much like it does with ShopKey or ProDemand. So if you are using Sun Collision, which if you're in a body shop, you know, excellent, excellent software for that, uh, you can now change it and integrate with it. All right, don't forget Security Link. You need to stay up to date in order to make all of that Security Link stuff work. Uh, has to be current software. And as we're growing this, uh, you know, manufacturer by manufacturer, this does give you one central location in your Snap-on account where you can add these manufacturers. So really, you just set it up once, and then you add manufacturers as they come online. So the latest one is Volkswagen Audi Group. That is a profile access code. You punch in your profile, and then it allows you in. Fiat Chrysler, of course, is through auto off, but you also would manage that through your Snap-on profile. And then Ford gets done in the background as long as you have Wi-Fi and as long as you have current software on the tool, that'll work. So with auto auth, anyways, you want to register once with auto auth. If you already have auto auth, that's great. You can just put your put your credentials in with your tech profile, and that enables uh, any other OEMs that are going to be coming online soon, like Nissan, whenever it's available. And yes, we're waiting for Nissan. No one, it's not available for anybody right now in North America. Uh, so when it is available, though, we'll just be we'll turn it on. We're all set, ready to go. And then you would just have to check a couple boxes in your profile and then you're good to go. And then, like I said, Volkswagen and Audi have a profile access code that you punch into your profile, and that allows you. All right, don't forget uh, also the customer journey that we have. So this was implemented a couple years ago. And what happens is when you buy a new tool, uh, we would ask for your email address. If we don't have your email address, you won't be getting these emails. But what it is, is it's a you know, welcome to the tool. Let's get let's get your Wi-Fi connected. Let's check for updates. It kind of walks you through all the setup functions that you would need. And then you'll get some links to training. And then every once in a while, we're not going to spam you every all the time. But, you know, maybe a couple times a month, you would get some emails that help you with your tool, some video tips or some other different things that might help you with your tool. So if you don't have your email address linked to us uh i would i would talk to your local franchisee snap-on representative and ask them to make sure that they have your current email address in there and then you'll at least get these uh these new uh, you know training links and things like that you won't get necessarily the tool specific stuff because it wasn't at the time of purchase because that's the only way we can kind of link the tool together with with your email address but it is available and you will still get that extra content the uh the newsletters and things all right, let's go live on the tool and look at some of these things that I just talked about. So let's see, which one do I want to pull up first? I'm going to pull up this one first. So this is the uh, new software, right? 24.2. Go into my vehicle history, and we're going to look at this Bronco. Right? So as we said, this Bronco wasn't even available up until now in the got a component test. So we'll go in there. So I can't really show you that on the on the uh, other other tool. But as you can see on this Bronco, uh, ABS charging system, engine and transmission. And then if I were to go into engine say, and maybe like variable valve timing, and then we have location images in here. Then go into location image, it's gonna show me where the uh, you know, where the system is. This is uh, one of the sensors there. 
Uh, it's going to point to it under the hood. And then also, you know, things like signature tests, you know, it's going to show you the connector view. It's going to show you alternate connector views if necessary. And then comes down here and even gives you a known good waveform on there as well. Uh, so we can see this is going to be a different transition from idle to snap throttle as to how the pulse width modulation works on that uh, variable valve time. So that's uh, all, all sorts of information like this in here. I'm just picking and choosing a few different ones. Uh, but as you can see, a lot of information. How about like turbocharger bypass valve? That's got a location image as well. It's right there. You can see that uh, right on one of the boost tubes down there kind of on the front driver's side. Uh, and then the uh, wastegate position sensor as well. That's turbo related. That's over on the other side. On the other side of the tube, we've got a wastegate position sensor there, right? So a lot of location images being added, a lot of new tests and functions added to the tool as well. All right, so that is um, that. Let's go to, oh, I got this Dodge Nitro as well. So remember how I mentioned that there were tips or, or pictures available within some of these tips inside uh, Intelligent Diagnostics. I'm going to go into the scanner, and I'm going to pull up this vehicle. All right, so I'll do a quick code scan on this. I'm going to go through. It's going to come up with a P0016. There's a cam and crank timing misalignment. Go into Fast Track Intelligent Diagnostics. You'll see we got uh, you know any TSBs that pertain to it, which are none. Uh, top repairs graph, smart data, functional test, got a component test, sure track information. But if I go down to troubleshooter here, and this would be available on any of our tools that have sure track or intelligent diagnostics. And we see this one here, engine stalls and will not restart. Vehicle runs fine for a few minutes and stalls like the key is shut off, will not restart until it cools down. Customer replace the throttle body and crankshaft position sensor before bringing the vehicle for repair. The vehicle stalls, cam and crank signals appear out of sync with one another. So they connect the scan tool, found the code, view the signals. Signal panels were clean and correctly timed. After removing the front cover to inspect the timing belt, it was discovered that the idler pulley bearings had disintegrated, and we can see that picture right there. Surprisingly, the idler bearings were not making noise, but were causing disturbances between the cam and crank timing because it was just kind of rattling around. So it's the timing belt, et cetera. Uh, took it for a road test, cleared it, and uh, all was good. So it's nice to have pictures, because sometimes a picture can be worth a thousand words just being able to see that. So this is getting integrated in to the uh, to the tips, to the uh, SureTrack information, fast track intelligent diagnostics information, all there under the troubleshooter. So you'll see those pop up uh, from time to time. All right, what's next? History here. Uh, so yeah, 15 F-150, the PMI. Let me go to the other, the old stuff. Should have the F-150 here. All right. Go on the scanner. Uh, F series. So, like I said, if I wanted to, prior to this update, if I wanted to or needed to change my, um, there it is, eight awesome driver's aids. If I wanted to change that side obstacle detection control module, I couldn't. Or I couldn't finish the job anyways. I could manually change it, but I couldn't do that PMI. I could do codes and data, but I didn't have that test of it. All right, same thing with engine, same thing with uh, steering rack, things like that. So let me pop over to this guy. And let me pull that up. Go into scanner. And this is with the new software. Go down to object detection module. And now we see if we this new button here, functional tests. And then special functions, and then there's programmable module installation now. So PMI is pretty simple. I can just walk you through it real quick. So uh, it verifies the VIN. This is on a demo, you know, a simulator, so we're not going to get that. Uh, and then first thing you need to do is read data from the old module. So as long as the original module is installed, uh, turn the ignition switch on. It's going to read the data, and it's going to pull it up. In this case, I get an error because it's in demo mode. But it would pull that up. It would say, okay, we're good. Do your repair. Then it would ask you to put the new module in. And then you could go in here once again. And then go write data in new module. Install the new module in the vehicle. Turn the ignition switch on. And then it would find the file that had been retrieved. Like I said, we just had an error in the simulator. So that didn't happen. But it would find the file. And then it would uh, put it in. 
right? So that is PMI. What is next? Let me have 250. Here. 250. Go in. And this is the 6.2 gas engine, by the way. And we can see if we go into guide a component test on this one on the old software, we have ABS. And that's it. If I go over to the new software, though, just this guy right here. And go into guide a component test, 6.2 gas once again. And now you see more than ABS, we get charging system, engine, HVAC, transmission. If I go into engine, you can see all the different sensors listed here. Say like the cam sensor. I wanted to find my cam signal. There's my cam sensor signal looks like. Uh, you know, EVAP system, I can look at the vent solenoid. Do a voltage test on that. It's going to tell me what known good is. Uh, should be above 10 and a half volts. So lots of information, transmission information. All right, this is on the 6R100. So you can see like speed sensors, shift interlock, shift solenoids, turbine speed sensor. Transmission connectors, and it just so, shows you the whole connector there, right? There's the connector location. There's the pinouts right there. Gives you the pinouts right, right on that. Makes it so much easier. Brake pedal switch. Right, you can see what the brake pedal switch looks like on that. So it's all right there on the tool, readily available for you. That's the next one. And the last one we're going to do is this Mercedes GLE 580. This isn't even listed in the old software, so I can't really show it to you on the old software, but on the new software. Uh, and this is a gas electric, by the way, too, so it's a hybrid. So we got engine, and you can see different things like cam adjustment valve, right? And signature test, right, in there. We got all of our all that information in there. And uh, yeah, lots of lots and lots of added information in there. This model wasn't even available. Um, so now it all is with that updated software. So hopefully it got you a good view. As in, it's just, like I said, it's just some of the highlights that are available. Can't obviously go through the whole thing or we'd be here all night. Um, but uh, that is our software. So I got a few more things. Don't forget training. I do training every week, every Tuesday uh, on some sort of an industry topic. I do it here on Zoom. I do it on YouTube. I do it on Facebook uh, two times a night on Tuesday. So six and nine Eastern, five and eight Central. Uh, don't forget, uh, Keith also does new product training, 730 Eastern on Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday's on Zeus. Thursday is on Apollo and Triton. And don't forget our YouTube channel as well. Over 27,000 subscribers we just reached and almost approaching 500 videos on there. Plus, we have the website with online training modules and on tool training is available as well. And if you scan that QR code right there, you can sign up for Zoom for either Keith's training or my training from that link. Also on our YouTube channel, here are all of the live stream topics that I have hosted over the past few years. We got 83 different episodes right now with more to come. We'll hit 100 by the end of the year. Anything from ADOS to reflashing and everything in between, you can see what's there. All available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash snap on diagnostics. You can scan the QR code there and uh, that'll bring you there and subscribe you automatically. Very helpful. Very helpful. I see questions coming in. A couple more slides and I'll get to those. Uh, also, don't forget, if you do attend one of our webinars, you will get a certificate for uh, continuing education, things like that. Uh, so we recognize your time and commitment. And upon completion, you will receive that. Make sure, though, and this is only on Zoom because we can't track any of that on YouTube uh, or Facebook. Just make sure if you want a certificate, you register and attend on Zoom. Make sure you have your proper name spelled the way you want on a certificate and make sure you have the correct email address in there spelled properly as well. Otherwise, we can't get you a certificate. It's just an automated process. Takes the name and email address, spits it out into a certificate, and then you get a PDF email. So just so you're aware, uh, that's how that works. All right, now let's get to questions. I got a fair number on YouTube and a fair number on Zoom. So let's look on Zoom. If you are on Zoom and you haven't asked a question before uh, or not sure how, uh, if you look on the top or the bottom of your screen, there should be some Zoom controls, tell different things. Uh, one of them should, should say Q&A. Click on that and then type in your question. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, just feel free to use the live chat or a comment. Uh, let's see. 
How would auto auth work for school students with multiple scan tools, Claude asks. So if the school has the account, um, the base account can have five tools on it. Um, the more fancy account, I don't remember how many more tools, but it's a considerably more larger amount of tools are available on there. And I think that's like maybe a couple hundred bucks a year. Uh, you'd have to look into that with that, with the, um, um, with auto off there. All right. Uh, let's see. Someone wanted to see the Mercedes. I went in there on the Mercedes there. Uh, so I think we got to that. Let's see the CAN bus. All right. Uh, let's see. And Claude asked, am I going to be at the NC3 training? Not as far as I know. I don't usually go to those unless they need to um, evaluate a new training class that we're launching. So not usually at those. Um, Gerardo asks, is the update available now to if you have a software, software subscription and you're current on your subscription? Yes, it's available. Uh, we were pushing it out to a small number of people on subscription just so we don't overload the server. Um, but if you do go, if you are on subscription and you haven't gotten it yet, you can go out and check for an update and then it will download it to you. Uh, we're not going to turn it on for everybody until Monday. But uh, if you are on subscription and it's current and you want it now, just go out and request it. Just make sure, depending on what you have for a tool, you want to leave it on overnight, let it download and do its thing. Make sure the power is plugged. All right. Uh, let's see. Simon asks, snap on not doing in-person classes. So we do do in-person classes on a local level. I don't go around and do them anymore like I used to. Uh, but de definitely there are local diagnostic reps that do them uh, you know, fairly regularly, at least maybe monthly. Um, usually depends on if you have a local rep. So I, Simon, I would say talk to your franchisee or other snap on rep and see if they, if they have a diagnostic rep that will be doing training classes in the future. All right, let's go to YouTube. Uh, let's see. Caleb's got a few here. Let's see. And it looks like some scope suggestions. Let's see. Uh, I'd like some updates to the scope itself. Well, we got that one update this time. And got a component test. There was a ton. Um, but this one, this, this next one gets asked all the time. And I've asked for it many times, too. And I think maybe... Maybe at some point, it's not going to be any time in the next year, but sometime at some point we may get that um, split screen easy from the scope instead of having to go into guided component test. But she has a couple clicks, but it does not. Uh, it says it limits settings in the scope and having to go through component tests. It actually doesn't. So um, on the guided component test, it will pull up the scope or the graphing meter or the uh, digital meter if it need, depending on what the test is. So what I always suggest to do is just open a test that's a voltage test on like um, a cam or a signature test on a cam sensor. Just open that up and then you can open up the scope and you have all settings on all your channels. Uh, you can change your voltage. You can put an amp probe on it. You can put a, an ignition uh, probe on it, what have you. Uh, I talk about it in a couple of my guided component test videos. Uh, I think like guided component test part four uh, and part three, it's available in there as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then this, this another, here's another good idea, too, from Caleb. If someone could ever create a scope trigger that worked off a set value you program in. So start recording and end recording when a certain value goes above or below a user set value. So I think that's something we could explore. So thank you for that. Uh, uh, so Phil asks... Um, what do you do with PMI if the old module doesn't communicate? Does it allow manual as-built coding to type in the scanner? No, you would need either a uh, factory tool or a JBox to do that. Uh, what about PATS? PATS also would need to use uh, factory software for that as well, uh, not just PMI. Uh, Brenton says, hopefully Australian software includes Ford Focus PMI. I'm not sure, actually. I haven't seen the layout on that as of yet. So uh, I know we've had it over here for an update. So maybe it made its way across the Pacific over there. Hello from uh, Australia. Welcome. Uh, let's see. SC, uh, SC Spider-Man says, how can I update my scanner since I have no rep at my shop anymore? Um, first option I would say is if you're on a subscription, 
or a prepaid data plan, you can just go and download it yourself to the tool. Um, otherwise, I would call tech customer care, 1-800-424-7226. Uh, give them a ring and they should be able to help you out with something. I, I know we've been working on a way, if, if somebody doesn't have a rep, they can actually go in and purchase a subscription or a data plan uh, to get their tool back up and running. So I would that's the first place I'd call and they can point you in the right direction. Uh, Graphic Extreme says, just purchased Zeus Plus, getting a Tuesday. Awesome. That's uh, an excellent investment. Uh, I think you'll be happy with it. Uh, and Matt Everly agrees. I have a Zeus Plus, and you'll like the scan tool, he, he replies. Uh, let's see. Philip says, agree with Caleb. Snap on scope. Uh, need some updates. Uh, and also, Philip is asking for, can we ever get topology? So that's a hot topic as well with topology. So uh, the way our pre-scan works does the same thing that topology does. Uh, it tells you whether or not the module's communicating, tells you whether or not there's a code in the module, and then it subs it out to uh, what the module is. And then you top on the module name, it gets you in there too. It doesn't have pretty graphics, but it gets you the same same information. Uh, Graphic Stream says they use a Pico scope, and with the new Zeus Plus, will it have the latest software available? Yes. So when they activate it to you, since the software just came out, actually, uh, It'll technically be on dealer trucks on Monday. They could install it now, but um, with that Zeus Plus, when it's activated, you said you're getting it on Tuesday, so whenever it's activated, that will be current. Uh, let's see. Also, Phil uh, mentioned something about the scope with zooming. Uh, we don't want to be zoomed in tight, then uh, burn the buffer up to zoom out. I get it. I hear you. Working on that one, too. Um, these are things that get asked every time we do a software update and more. Um, and I will tell you what, they hear you, they hear you and I've been pushing for it and some discussions I've been having, it's looking really promising for some of these things and some other things that you might not be thinking about, which would be wonderful if they all get implemented. So stay tuned is the best I can tell you right now. We are working on it. They do hear you. They do understand. It's just a matter of above my pay grade. Let's put it that way. But it, it does, it does look promising on that uh simon says his snap-on guy retired well hopefully you'll get a new one anytime soon uh and that means the route's available in your area simon as well so. all right Whew. always get a lot of questions on these software calls so that's a wonderful thing i'm glad i'm here to be able to answer them for you live and in person so with that that is i can go forward here that's our class Thank you very much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend a little bit of time with me. Hopefully we learned a few more tips and tricks in the software. And like I said, this only scratching the surface as to what is actually in there. There's way more in there. Um, it's just, you know, they, they uh, you just got to find out, I guess, on some of these things. Uh, we do publish it in a vehicle coverage guide. As well. uh, Simon says, uh, who do I talk to a customer service? So if you're calling Diagnostics customer service or are you calling in to Crystal Lake customer service, which would be Snap-on Tools customer service? Um, I would start with Diagnostics. And if you don't get anywhere, which you probably should, but if you don't get anywhere with Diagnostics, call the uh, customer care number for Snap-on Tools. And I don't know that one off the top of my head. Uh, ends in 7226. But uh, yeah, you can look it up online. It's, it's pretty, pretty easy to find. All right. So that is that. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend. We will be uh, doing this again next Wednesday and then the following Monday, just in case you missed it and you wanted to ask questions. Uh, we will make that uh, available again. We'll do some replays on, uh, like I said, next Wednesday, the 3rd. And then on Monday, the 8th, we'll be replaying this as well. Plus, you can always go on YouTube and watch the replays. So with that, Enjoy the rest of your night. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good night. Take care.